Astaxanthin extended lifespan by 12% in a new study. So what is astaxanthin? Then we'll go through the results of this new trial. Astaxanthin is an intense red-colored naturally occurring carotenoid found in several species of bacteria and microalgae. It is an important colorant of crustaceans and was initially isolated from lobsters in 1938. And it's a very interesting molecule for its antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activities. Standing out from other antioxidants, it seems to be about 100 to 500 times Times stronger compared to alpha tocopherol and 10 times stronger to other antioxidants such as beta carotene. This is important with respect to aging because as we age there's a progressive mitochondrial dysfunction that occurs so the mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells. They start to produce more and more oxidants damaging the surrounding mitochondria and tissues. So the theory goes that if we can use antioxidants such as astaxanthin to mop up these oxidants and stop the damage hopefully we can protect our DNA and cells. But there's important nuance to this idea that we need to go through. When a meta-analysis was done by Cochrane, combining 78 randomized clinical trials involving just under 300,000 participants, they found no evidence of benefit from antioxidant supplements. Well, from that disappointment emerged a new theory that was described in a landmark paper called The Hallmarks of Aging. There are multiple lines of evidence which have forced an intense re-evaluation of the mitochondrial free radical theory of aging. Of particular impact has been the unexpected observation that increased oxidants may actually extend the lifespan of yeast and worms, and that manipulations to increase antioxidant defenses have not extended longevity. Instead, there's accumulating evidence for the role of oxidants in triggering proliferative and survival signals. For example, think about what happens when we exercise. When we exercise, we stress our bodies and we release all sorts of oxidants. That's a good thing. Those oxidants signal to ourselves that they need to become more efficient. And here's where the nuance comes in. As age advances, the levels of oxidants increase in an attempt to maintain survival until they betray their original purpose and eventually aggravate, rather than relieve, the age-associated damage. So instead, what we're trying to do is strike a perfect balance between oxidants and antioxidants, and that's where astaxanthin comes in. Astaxanthin powerfully activates an enzyme called NRF2, and NRF2 acts as a switch to activate a whole battery of antioxidants antioxidant genes. NRF2 has been variously described as an activator of cellular defense mechanisms, the master redox switch, and the guardian of health span and gatekeeper of species longevity. So by taking astaxanthin, we can activate NRF2 and hopefully rebalance the oxidant to antioxidant ratio. Now, the most famous NRF2 activator is sulforaphane, but sulforaphane, it's an unstable molecule, so it's incredibly difficult to create a supplement. So while astaxanthin isn't as potent, it's stable, and that brings us on to this new trial. It was a study performed by the Interventions Testing Program. This program is special because it uses a genetically diverse population of mice rather than relying on inbred mice. And the experiments are conducted at the same time in three separate labs to figure out if the results are true and reproducible. The program chose to test astaxanthin because again it's a potent NRF2 activator and it's stable and well absorbed. There's also fantastic existing research showing that astaxanthin extends the lifespan of worms and yeast. What they found is that when male mice, when fed astaxanthin starting at 12 months of age, which is a slightly older age to start mice with supplements, it increased their median lifespan by 12%. And importantly, this effect was seen at all three of the sites, so it's a true reproducible result. But it's unclear as to why it only affected male mice rather than female mice. Either way, it's very encouraging. So what do the human clinical trials show? Should we start supplementing with astaxanthin? Well, if we start with a meta-analysis looking at astaxanthin supplementation on skin health, there were six randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trials and a couple of prospective open-label studies. It appeared that yes, astaxanthin did improve skin texture, appearance as in it decreased wrinkles, and it improved the moisture content at the end of the study periods. However, most of the studies had a relatively small sample size and were conducted on healthy Japanese females. Many of the studies were also funded by commercial entities with potential conflicts of interest. Overall, there is some clinical data to support the benefits of astaxanthin supplementation in the range of between 3 and 6 milligrams per day on skin health, especially for photo-aged skin but again we can't be too certain about these results. The individual trials were small and they were funded by supplement companies.
Moving on to a systematic review that looked at blood pressure, they found 10 randomized clinical trials with just under 500 participants, and it did appear that there were small improvements in blood pressure when astaxanthin supplements were used. But the effect was very small and not clinically relevant. If we have a look at oxidative stress and inflammation, it does appear that astaxanthin mildly reduces oxidative stress, but again, it's difficult to know how clinically relevant this is. And the final meta-analysis that I want to show you showed only marginal improvements in total cholesterol and blood pressure. And further, robust evidence is needed to examine the effect that astaxanthin has on patients with metabolic syndrome. So looking at the human data, there are possible benefits from taking astaxanthin, but the evidence is weak. We lack robust research. Plus, there are significant potential risks with astaxanthin supplementation. So remember, we're trying to strike a perfect balance between oxidants and antioxidants, and astaxanthin is a powerful antioxidant. The problem is that we've got human research showing that antioxidant supplements, particularly particularly beta-carotene and vitamin E, seem to increase mortality rates. And given that astaxanthin is a far more powerful antioxidant compared to beta-carotene, we need to tread carefully. This is why I prefer the idea of supplementing with glycine and NAC from the age of 45. So glycine and NAC are the building blocks of a powerful antioxidant called glutathione. But by using this strategy, we allow the body a chance to regulate itself. Again, all we're doing is supplying the building blocks, but it's the body's decision to figure out how much glutathione it wants to build. But on the other hand, glycine and NAC supplements might not be enough to restore the balance between oxidants and antioxidants as we get older. So I'm of the view that there might be potential benefits from people who are over the age of 60 to supplement with astaxanthin. But again, more trials are needed. We can't make any firm conclusions yet. The other risk that we need to address is the possibility of blunting the positive effects of exercise. So like I mentioned earlier, when we exercise, we release all sorts of oxidants, and that's a good thing. The trouble is, if we start supplementing with antioxidants, we blunt that oxidant stress. And we've got multiple human clinical trials showing that antioxidant supplements do blunt the positive effects of exercise. So for me personally, as of right now, I would not recommend or take astaxanthin supplements. We need further research. And I think if anyone's going to get a benefit from astaxanthin supplements, it's patients over the age of 60. So I'm really excited to read studies looking at that age group. And if you want to find out more about the supplements that I personally take, make sure to check out this next video here. And a massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel.